how, how well do you think Gabriel Jesus will do for Arsenal? Well, I think he'll do well. I mean, it's easy to say that after pre-season and he's been flying, but the coaches at Arsenal are talking about how much he's given to the side, you know, as opposed to Lacazette and also Aubameyang in his last year or two. You know, he's got that mobility, that pace, um, it gives the option, he really works the centre-halves and um, obviously he scored goals and uh, his confidence should be really high. I know what it's like in pre-season. If you haven't scored, it's, it's in the back of your mind. You're thinking, oh, you know, I need to score early in the league here. And he does as well, I think, just to really settle him. But um, I, think he'll, I think he'll do well because this is the first time he's been... He's had that responsibility, right, you're our centre-forward. You're not going to play on the right wing. You know, you're going to be there most weeks and your job is to lead the line and, and get some goals. And I think he's at the stage of his career now where he's ready for that. He's 25, he's had that experience at City and he's ready for it. How much do you think it helps the, the young forwards around him? Because Arsenal are building Martinelli, Saka, Emile Smith-Rowe will be in and out of the side as well. Yeah. How much does it help having a Gabriel Jesus leading the line? Yeah, I mean, obviously to, to, to make those runs and to, and to stretch the opposition and to give them a bit more space and time to do what they do so well. I mean, for him as well, to have Odegaard just behind and Saka, you know, these creative players, Smith Rowe, that can see the pass early, you know. And it's just, you know, in pre-season they would have been building up an understanding, a chemistry, but that will continue as the season goes on as they get to know each other's games and movement. And uh, you wouldn't imagine he'd be short of chances this season. Just, just on Arsenal's window in general, what have you made of it on the whole? Obviously, they've signed positions that they really needed the strength in. Uh, Zinchenko, another mm. winner from City as well. Do you think they've got enough to really... not be? A, I think me and Harry both have them in our top four. So, like, have they done enough now? Have they come far along, far along enough in the process that they've uh, established under Arteta to convince you that they can get top four? Yeah, I think so. They're going to be a better outfit than last year. They're one more year experienced, one year older. You know, a lot was said about their youth uh, last year. And obviously that showed towards the end where the wheels came, came off, really. They ran out of gas, didn't they? You know, that, that North London derby was a, was a harsh reminder. But... Um, you know, if they were to get into that position again, I think they'd handle it better. Um, and, and with the uh, addition of people like Zinchenko and, and Jesus, you know, obviously not old, but they've got that winning mentality, that experience, which, which is going to help them. What do you make of the mood around the club at the moment? Because it feels, as an Arsenal fan, like Arteta has brought some pride back to Arsenal after a difficult few years. Yeah. How do you see it looking in? He had a lot of work to do, didn't he, when he went in there? Because I think... The after effects of Arsene Wenger's long, long reign were still in place. You know, Unai Emery obviously ch changed things as well, but he wasn't there for too long. So the culture of the club, I think, had to change. And that takes time. And uh, he's a disciplined manager. You know, rules are important to him, as we saw with Aubameyang, you know. Um, so uh, he was a man that didn't know about the manager's role, did he? He was a coach, and there's a world of difference between a number two and a number one. The book stops with him, and and he's getting to grips with that now. Um, and I think hopefully we'll see the benefit of Briefly that. Briefly going back to Arsenal, you mentioned that you expect them to be a better outfit this season. In which case, what would constitute a successful season for Arsenal in your eyes? Uh, top four. You know, uh, somebody said to me the other day, "Would you take them winning the Europa League and qualify for them the Champions League, but finishing seventh? But I wouldn't really, because then you think, well, what chance have they got in the Champions League the following year? Uh, you, I'd rather see that improvement uh, on a week-by-week -week basis, though, that they do finish in the top four. It'd be lovely to pick up a trophy, you know. Arsenal have only won a couple of European trophies in their history, so I think they'll, they'll have a good go at that. Um, but, uh, yeah, if they can get back in the top four, that'd be brilliant. I asked Gary Neville a question earlier on, and he said that Arsenal don't have enough leaders mm. in the team. Um, do you agree with that? If you disagree, who are the leaders that you look at in that side? Um, yeah, I don't, it may be not always apparent during a match, but I think they've got some good... I mean, Odegaard's obviously been given the armband. I don't know how much he talks behind the scenes or whether he's somebody that leads by example. There, there are plenty of players that lead by example. I think, you know, Saka always wants the ball, as does Odegaard. I think Gabriel at the back is a leader, you know, and Ben White to a certain extent. Um, Xhaka certainly you know he's back in Arsenal fans good books I think he's as well uh, it's always tricky to say that when we're on the outside looking in but 
I think I think there's a good spirit within there. You know, they're, they're kind of growing together, that group of players. So. You excited to see William Saliba? Yes, yeah. I was wondering when he was going to come back. I thought perhaps at the start of last season, but he's ready now. You know, at, at when he originally signed, I don't think he had the strength in his body to cope. Uh, but now, obviously, with the time he spent in France, made his um, full France uh, debut, he looks a classy player. You know, he really just so that like the three of them, White Gabriel and him. You know, who's going to uh, what's going to be the preferred partnership? So it'd be great to see him. Yeah. As a striker, are you looking forward to watching Eddie Nketiah this season? Yeah, yeah, because I, I enjoyed watching him at the end of last term. I commentated on quite a few games and he, he looked a different player to what he had before. He was just working so much harder off the ball, closing down, and he earned himself some chances and goals from doing that. You think of the Chelsea one. Um, and he wasn't, he wasn't just a poacher. He, I mean, he's a, he's a brilliant finisher in the box, you know, just poke out a toe get there first. He, he's very good at that. But, you know, I think for Arteta, he had doubts because he, he, he knew he needed to do more outside the box. So he's bringing that into his game. And I think he'll get a fair few outings, maybe not start too many Premier League matches, but you know, as a sub, maybe partnering Jesus or replacing him, whatever. I think he'll, he'll have a big part to play. Europa League could be a, yeah. particularly in the group stage, could be a good breeding ground for him. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he... I don't think he felt wanted before. He looked at his contemporaries with the under-21s. They'd all gone on to be regulars in their Premier League sides. He wasn't. Uh, but now he signed a good contract. He had a, had a good chat with the manager. He's wanted, and that, and that does wonders for a player's confidence. How do you feel about the job that Edu's doing, sort of sitting above Mikel Arteta? Because he received a lot of criticism yeah. at the start of last season. It feels like the, the, the kind of the mood around him is shifting. Have yeah. you been impressed by what you've seen from him? Yeah, I think the, um, the biggest uh, factor is he's on the same page as Arteta. They seem to gel well. They, they've got the same ideas about what needs to come into the club, what kind of players they need. And Yeah, I think a manager and director of football have got to be on the same page, obviously, to, for it to work. So, I mean, he was another, like Arteta, came in very... It's such a tough job, that, I think. And he came in raw, inexperienced, uh, there were criticism, criticisms that, you know, one agent in particular was being used too often, you know, Raul Sanley, he was in the club before that, uh, it wasn't right then, you know, the Pepe signing was a disaster for 70 odd million, uh, but now it looks much more structured and a bit like Liverpool, you know, they know their targets and they, and they get it done without too much fanfare. Who's your favourite commentator to work with? <laughs> you can't ask me that. I'm with Bill Leslie on Saturday at Everton Chelsea. I love Bill, love Rob Hawthorne and Martin. I mean, to work with Martin is, is incredible. I did FIFA with him for nine years. And, you know, you, you'll look at a game from 1975 and he's commentating on it. He's, I mean, he's unbelievable. I think he's about, well, no, I won't say it, but uh, <laughs> no, he's not 110. No, he's not. Um, but yeah, the, oh, I mean, his experience and he's hunger for the game still, his enthusiasm for the game is amazing after all these years. And his enthusiasm to help other people I think is amazing as well. He's helped me before. Yeah. Um, and he didn't have to. No, he's good at that. Himself, to. Yeah, he didn't have to, but Martin took the time to say, to me, I met him at an event and he said, send me a demo and I'll give you feedback on it. And he did. Yeah. He no, to do no that. he's done that with amazing. a lot of people, students and that. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's brilliant like that. I mean, he's got, you know, a wealth of experience to call on, hasn't he? There's nobody... You know, John Motson did it, and now he stood down. So he, he's out on his own now. Yeah. Cool. Brilliant. Think we're done. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Pleasure. That was amazing. I was better than all the others, weren't I? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Definitely. You're so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Harry was waiting. He was like, I want to talk about Arsenal. I want to talk about this.